Hello, artists. Welcome back to another Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Folsom. So happy and delighted to be here with you today. And even more delighted to have a very, very special guest and friend here with me, Julie Getzinger. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be with you all. Awesome. Yes. So we are going to be diving in with Julie today, talking about uh, making money as an artist, being abundant, and also taking care of ourselves while we're trying to do all the things, right? So um, Julie Getzinger, uh, we know each other through a, uh, a mastermind mentorship that we're both in together, and she is awesome. She is a photographer, and let me just make sure I don't mess something up here whenever I say this, but she um, is helping photographers to make more money and impact without sacrificing their well-being. She is the best-selling author of Free to Fly, Manifest uh, the Life of Your Dreams. Yes, girl, I love that. <laughs> um, and she's a CEO and founder of Free to Fly. She's also going to to have some uh, complimentary gifts for you guys at the end of this podcast. And we'll put those links in the show notes because they are so super, super freaking juicy. Um, so generous of her to be um, giving those to our audience. So, all right, Julie, thank you so much for being here. Let's thank dive you. In. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I first kind of want to um, just kind of fill everybody in about, well, I just like to Personally, I'd like to know a little bit about your backstory, about how you got into photography and maybe a little piece of your past with your photography. Sure. Um, so I got into photography after I had my first child and I was obsessed with capturing all the milestones, you know, and there are many when they're first born. Um, and my husband at the time bought me a really nice camera and I was like, huh, I can, this is like a professional camera. Um, and my pictures got better and better with practice because I was, you know, inspired to capture, you know, my children's milestones. And I was an elementary school teacher at the time and um, feeling a little constrained, feeling like my creativity was not being fully expressed. Um, kept getting told by my principal to follow the curriculum and to stop being so creative. <laughs> wow. um, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my cue, you know, to, to start out on my own. And um, my son got asked to leave daycare. And then um, it was kind of like one of those things. I'm like, well, I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom, so I'm going to start a business. And I started my photography business while I was home with my son, who was two at the time. So that's the kind of my journey of how I got started in photography. That's amazing. So how old were you? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I was 32. Wow. Okay. I love this so much, especially <laughs> because, you know, I don't know about you, but I work with so many female artists who like, um, have all this self-doubt around starting later. And I know it's just, I didn't know that about you. So it's awesome mm -hmm. to know that you actually started your photography and your art at 32. Well, that was the year I graduated art school. I was 32 years old. So it's just awesome. That's awesome. Um, so then like, I know now, like you, you help other artists um, and visual artists and photographers um, to build a business for themselves. And it's interesting. I'm just curious, like, how did that kind of, how did you transition from, you know, just doing the art for yourself, for your own fulfillment, your own well-being, um, your own, your, your own creative, you know, voice. How did you then transition into um, building a business and then, and then on to helping artists too? Give me so, all the details. Yeah. So COVID <laughs> changed everything, of course, for mm -hmm. all of us. And I, you know, was thinking, okay, I can either apply for unemployment because I can't do my in-person photo shoots anymore, or I can take an inventory of my other skill sets. And I actually had an intuitive reading with someone I'd been going to for about 10 years. And she said that my guides, my spirit guides were waiting for me to realize that I'm also intuitive psychic medium and that that was something I was meant to do. Um, so I came out on Facebook and said, who wants a free reading? I'm, you know, honing my skills and I got inundated with requests and so much so that two months after I offered free readings, I made $20,000 in one month from doing individual readings with no training, no background, <laughs> really 
way at all. And I was like, okay, clearly this is the path I meant to go on. And I knew a lot of photography business owners as a photographer myself. So they were the ones that I started doing readings for, which evolved into coaching and hosting retreats. Awesome. I, I just, I, that's so juicy to me because I know for me and a lot of other artists that I know, like we kind of get stuck like in this box and in this label of like, oh, we can only do this one thing, you know, like this is our gift. Like it's the only gift. So I just love hearing that, you know, you were like, oh, I have other gifts. I have other skills I can build. So let's do that. Let's build those and let's use those. I just, that's so awesome. (laughs) So uh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, Okay. So I'm kind of curious then like, so now you're, you're, are you back to also doing your photography as well now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I reopened my photography studio because I missed creating the art. Um, I was spending so much time coaching and helping others in every area of their life, not just business, but also their personal lives, their marriages, um, their families and um, loving themselves is what it involved into self-love coaching. And I was like, you know what? I really miss playing with art. Like I miss being in the field and doing this. Um, So I reopened my photography business about a month ago and just said, hey guys, I'm back. Reached out to some some of my former friends and clients and they were so excited to hear the announcement that I was available to create art again myself. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Because sometimes never, like I know for me too, like sometimes never you start to we go through different seasons, right? In life for sure. And sometimes, you know, we go through this massive season of like deep creativity and really nurturing all of those gifts and skills. And then um, we might transition into like a a different kind of season um, in building business and focusing on that. And um, yeah, and I, I definitely understand what that's like to kind of go, oh, I miss you know, I, I, it's time for me to bring that back in, in a stronger way. I miss that, you know, side of me. Um, yeah, I think it's super, super easy on both. You know, I, sometimes I don't know what to think about it all. (laughs) And I'm curious what your thoughts are. Cause I'm like, sometimes it's like, it's so easy to just go so all in on the creative piece to where you're not taking care of yourself financially Mm -hmm. and you're not building that business. And then also the flip side of that, where you can just go, okay, now I'm all focused on business. Let's build this. Let's get more financial security. And then, so sometimes that balance can kind of, or that equilibrium can kind of get off, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, so anyway, so any other thoughts you want to share on that would be greatly appreciated. I I found for me that, you know, if I'm in joy, the financial abundance is drawn to that energy of joy. So, you know, if there's something that is no longer causing my jo- myself joy, it's giving myself permission to shift and do something else. Like now I'm being really called to be on stage and I want to be in front of the camera. I want to be speaking. I want to be seen. I want to be interviewed. I want, I want to be heard. Like I have this burning desire to step into my spotlight and, and I'm answering that call. And I know that as I do that the financial abundance is a match to that energy of joy. Um, and so I think it's really just about giving yourself permission, like you said, to be in those different seasons and to trust that there's a cycle to everything and it's following the intuition that is pulling us a certain way. And it, it feels like a burning desire. It feels like I just have to do this, you know, whether your spouse is on, is on board or not, or your family's on board or your friends, it doesn't matter. It's the soul's yearning for that expression and that different form of expression. And I think as creatives we have many 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 gifts that we're meant to explore in our lifetime and we do a disservice to ourselves and the world by suppressing any of them that are calling us oh my gosh that is so amazing (laughs) that's so inspiring yeah and it makes me think of there's a book i've been reading um the path of least resistance by robert fritz and he says in there like the soul will not invest in a compromise Mm. and um what you just said to me, it's like, that is, that's it, right? Yeah. Like, um, not compromising, following, following, you know, that creative self, following that intuition and that voice forward. And, 
And it's also can be scary too to do that, mm-hmm. right? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you're constantly the beginner, you know, it's like starting oh over gosh. again and again. And, you know, we like to think like, okay, and I'm good now. I've got it all figured out and okay. And then it's like, oh, but I want this instead now. And it's kind of like you try to like close your eyes to it, but the soul is not going to let you forget your calling. It's just not going to let up and it becomes painful to not go. So the, the longer you withhold, hold yourself back from expressing that gift that's meant to be explored next, the, the, the worse it's going to feel. And so eventually just other things will be stripped out of your life to make it super obvious that this is the way you're going, like it or not. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause I think sometimes we do avoid doing things like that or, or making changes, growing, learning, moving forward because of the discomfort, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, it's interesting what you just said is like, but, but if we don't do that, it's like, we're still going to be, you're still going to be in discomfort. And actually mm-hmm. that form of discomfort is much longer lasting, you know, and much more painful as well. So Totally. The discomfort of being a beginner again, of, you know, being mm-hmm. in, a, in that uncomfortable learning space and growing space and the pressure of that, you know, um, it is uncomfortable, right? Mm-hmm. It is, it is, there is some discomfort with it, but I'm always like, but which shit sandwich do we want to eat? You know, there's, like, <laughs> there's like a level, there, there is like a level of shit sandwich on both sides, right? Um, anyways, That's so, what I always say. You can go the easy way or the hard way, but you're going, you know, it's like <laughs> the soul can like drag you kicking and screaming, or you can just kind of get on your raft and float down. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Or, yeah, you might hit a few little bumps, but it's yeah, yeah it's better than being dragged, you know, kicking and screaming for sure. Totally. Oh yeah. And I, I think, you know, I don't know about you, but in my experience, the big the big turning points, you know, that's definitely where I was at was like mm-hmm. being dragged, kicking and screaming, like this is so painful, you know, even to the point of like feeling um you know, depressed and, you know, all those things. And it just, yeah. So, so it's, it was almost like, girl, you have to do this now. You've got to change. <laughs> uh, totally. I tend to be that type, like, no, just wait, wait until I'm just so bloody and beaten. And, you know, like, I, I, you know, Me I, too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, awesome. You know, keeping it real, being honest for sure. Um, so I kind of want to dive into, um, what you're doing now, you know, helping visual artists, um, to be more abundant, um, while, you know, without sacrificing their well being and, and taking care of themselves. So I would just love to hear more about that, about the work that you're doing now, um, yeah. and what that looks like for people who, you know, might be interested in learning more about you and working with you. Yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm hosting retreats and the retreats are all about getting really, um, you know, familiar with that relationship you have with money, the relationship you have with time. Um, there's never enough of it or, you know, what your stories are around money and time. You feel like you have to work hard for money. You know, you have to trade your time for money. So it's first, it's getting really curious about what stories are you telling yourself? And then it's doing the inner work to start to rewrite those stories and um, to decide what, how you want to be living your life now. Um, and I also have learned through my own experience that when we work really hard and we do all the things, that actually cuts off our flow of abundance because our energy is in so many different projects and we're feeling pulled and we get to that place of overwhelm when we just completely shut down. I don't want to do any of it. Forget all of it, burn it all to the ground. You know, I think a lot of creatives can relate to that feeling of just like, oh, screw it. I'm not doing any of this anymore. And how can we, you know, look at that before we get to that state? How can we take better care of ourselves now? How can we be more mindful of being more present in the moment, of being more grateful for everything that we have in our lives, taking really good care of our bodies, getting our rest, and really tuning into the intuition that tells us the best path forward with the least amount of resistance. And we get that by being quiet, by doing less in our day, by you know scheduling ourselves less. Um, 
So when you're in the building phase and you're trying to do all the things, you know, it's like head down and you're just work, 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 work. That can take you to a certain point, and then there's a fine line of burnout, and there's that you cross that line, and then it takes a while or can to bounce back from that. And that's when it's like a reassessing of your life. What matters to me now? What's important to me now? What is success? How do I want to live my life? And when you get to that part, then it's about recreating your life. So I work with women who are at that point of they've had success as they've defined it in the past. And now they're just like, now what, you know, what's next for me? And I want to feel good. I want to spend more time with my loved ones. I want my business to provide for me rather than me always having to provide it. Like how can the business nurture you? So it's kind of in that different cycle, that different season of now I'm ready to really enjoy my life. Um, so that's what I help women to do through my abundance breakthrough retreats. And then I do um, one on one coaching as well. If there's something deeper that they want to go into, um, if there's childhood wounds, which who doesn't have childhood wounds, we all do. Um, but yeah. I do that one on one with clients too, is to dig deeper into that um, and to hold that space for them to be honest about what's going on and to look deeper into at, into their past with my intuitive mm -hmm. skills so that we can start to unearth some of those things, bringing light and awareness to it, and then we can let it go and rewrite the story. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm working on now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my gosh. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, gosh, you said so many things there. So I'm just curious, like if we can go back to, to the stories mm -hmm. and especially the, the money stories, um, I, you know, I would love to hear from, from you, like, is there any, um, is there any kind of like I guess like money stories that you see that obviously everybody's versions are going to be a little bit different, but is there mm -hmm. any that you have um, dealt with and seen that seem to show up for, you know, for a larger percentage of the people that you work with mm -hmm. um, again and again, like what would be yeah. an example of mm -hmm. that? One of the most common money stories is working hard for your money and trading time for the money. Um, and, and what it comes down to is not feeling worthy, like always feeling like you need to do something to be worthy of money. And same thing with love. I need to do something to earn your love. I need to prove myself lovable. And what I help people to see is that you are worthy because you exist. You are a divine being of God. You are here. You are worthy beyond measure. You know, and I always hear the the quote in my head, like, if you only knew how loved and cherished you really were, you know, if you can tap into that energy of your divine higher self who knows that she is, she is powerful. She is God. She is an extension of God, you know, of source energy. And when mm -hmm. she's in that energy, there's nothing she can't be, do or have. So it's really tuning into that and as much as possible and we know we're off track when we feel the negative emotion when you're in that like no one wants to work with me nobody cares what i'm doing no one sees me no one's listening mm -hmm. and and getting in that it's it's ugly and it's dark but it's also part of the process too because when you feel that and you allow yourself to go through that to get curious well where is this coming from are these even my stories is this something someone told me as a child that I, I that i didn't wasn't worthy of something i wasn't good enough i wasn't you know good at this or whatever and it's it's allowing ourselves to look at that to feel it and then okay i acknowledge it and now i'm going to let it pass through my body and then we can choose to tap into that higher self that energy that is divine. And from that place is where we create what we desire. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. And so many of us, I know myself included, you know, it's like, we're, we don't know that, that these are stories. Mm -hmm. We don't even like, we're just not even aware, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, this is just what's been modeled to us growing up, you know, especially if for those of us who come from, you know, uh, a working class family or, you know, uh, you know, even poverty level families, you know, that is the message you get is like trade time for money, um, you know, labor, 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 you know, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Yeah. Like you've got to work hard. You've got to work hard. I don't know how many times I heard that message over and over and over again. And almost like, um, too, like I, I know for me, I had a lot of shame that was kind of put on me, um, as a creative 
type of person, like, uh, because I didn't like cleaning, you know, it's like, <laughs> I didn't like cleaning stuff or washing dishes and all that kind of stuff, which was all part of my chores. But I also got labeled as lazy a lot, mm. you know, um, as a kid. So it was like, there's like a lot of shame mm. growing up around that. And then my parents were very much, you know, hardworking people. So mm. I love that you brought that up and, and talk about that because there was such a high value put on like, hard, 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 laborious work ethic. Yeah. Um, so, so many of us are just like, yeah, it's like, I didn't know, you know, it's like, we're just walking around kind of unconsciously believing these things, thinking that they're true. This is just how you live life. This is how you be, like you said, this is how you be worthy, mm -hmm. you know, of receiving, you know, you have to do, 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 do in order to receive. So, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And one of the exercises I have my um, clients do at the retreat is what did you hear your parents say about money? What did you hear your parents say about love? What did you hear your parents say about women, about men? Mm -hmm. So that's the first step is just what what did you hear? You know, what did you observe? How were your parents together? What was the conversation around these different things? And that just shed some light on what did we hear early in life when we were very impressionable. And as adults, you know, we are accountable for our uh, how we act and how we, you know, exist in the world. So not blaming our parents because they did the best they could with what they had at the time. So forgiving them for being human and probably passing on what their parents and their parents told them. But now as an adult, it is up to us to be responsible for our own actions and to decide how we want to live our lives. And as entrepreneurs, we, we are the creators. We are the ones that say, you know what? I'm gonna do things differently. I value freedom. And if you do, then what are you willing to do or let go of to embrace a freedom, a lifestyle? Mm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And there is such a letting go. And I love that you mentioned like not blaming or shaming, you know, anywhere that you got these stories from, you know, and, and also not blaming and shaming ourselves for walking in them and believing them and acting in them, you know, every day. Um, so just, yeah, I think that's so beautiful. Like just being so forgiving and being willing to let go. But I think definitely, like you said, first is that like, open up your eyes, you know, to mm -hmm. it is kind of the first step um, for, for, I know most artists that, you know, and myself included, that was definitely one of the first steps. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, for those folks who, like, I know you said that um, you work with a lot of visual artists that have already kind of attained um, some success. And so I am curious, you mentioned something about the burnout piece. I know mm -hmm. we're kind of running out of time here, but um, I'm just curious, like, I, you know, you mentioned like kind of basically starting to question once you hit that burnout piece uh, or that burnout place or that place of like overwhelm and resentment and mm -hmm. exhaustion that I've definitely known myself very well mm -hmm. <laughs> over the last few years. Um, is there anything else that you recommend to somebody who um, is in that place of like burnout and wanting to burn it all down, and, <laughs> you know, resentful and tired? And yeah. So are there any like um, tips or or I mean, I don't like to call anything a tip because it's like all of these things are so huge. It's not <laughs> like they're like a little tip to make <laughs> your life better. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So anything that you have, like any advice um, for somebody who's in that place, I, I would love for you to share. Yeah. Um, well, I do have a, a free gift that I'm going to be sharing. It's a mm -hmm. video training on yes. um, how to make more money and impact without sacrificing your well-being. So you will get that. Um, but just a, as another tip, um, I would say acceptance. It's like accepting where you are right now. I feel like shit. Right now I feel stuck. Right now I feel like no one cares. Right now, and just like feeling that. And, and just being in that, you don't need anybody to walk you through it. You can just be in it and just allow yourself to say, right now I feel this, I feel this, I feel this. Something I like to do is just speak it into my phone because I believe that speaking is healing. And once I've said it out loud, I'm just like, there's the release is starting, you know, I'm giving it a voice. I'm saying this, I feel like this, I feel like this, I feel like this. And then I get to a place of 
but I'm still okay. I have everything I need and more and more is always coming. That's one of my favorite affirmations. I have everything I need and more and more is always coming. And I will literally look around my space to ground myself and bless everything that I have created in my life. Like I look at my my bed, this beautiful soft bed. I look at a picture of my children, my book, like my office space, this beautiful space. And I look around, I'm like, wow, look at all of this that I've done. And I pour gratitude into myself for doing that, for caring, for wanting to beautify my space for myself and my children and sending myself that love. So it's a practice. It's a practice of going into the depths of it, of feeling all of it, and then coming out the other side from a place of gratitude and acceptance and love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think I totally agree. And I know even just for me this week, just moving, you know, recently have kind of put me into a place of stress and. Um, it's, it's interesting how sometimes whenever I get stressed, like I go back to some old coping, uh, things, you know, some, some, some old ways of being and doing and behaving based on how I was raised and, you know, my mom and how she dealt with things, how she would get really controlling and stressed out and overwhelmed. And so just like, I just had to do that this week, what you're saying, like just sitting in the feeling, like I feel so anxious, you know, Mm -hmm. just acknowledging that. And I think too, like, you're like, so beautiful what you said, like about allowing and being willing, first of all, just to acknowledge it, to express it, to allow it to be there. Um, Because I know, I know for me in my life, I would then, then I would exasperate that kind of thing by like making it bad and wrong Mm -hmm. for feeling that way, you know, like, oh, why are you so stressed out? You know, like calm down, you know, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> like wanting to just rush to happy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like wanting to skip to happy, wanting to skip to feel good. Sometimes I feel like shit. Sometimes some days are really hard so, and, and allowing that too. Yeah. Some days are really hard. Some, some experiences are really hard. Some relationships are really challenging. Okay. So they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like you say, just allowing that, you know, being willing to go through it, being willing to experience it and Mm -hmm. to know that we are capable Mm -hmm. of handling all of it, you know? And this is something one of my coaches just said to me, if it exists, it must be necessary. If it Mm -hmm. exists, it must be necessary. Mm -hmm. And that goes for everything, every feeling, every experience, everything. If it exists, it must be necessary. We don't always know why. We may never know why, but it's necessary. Yeah. And speaking of coaches, you know, I know you coach. Mm -hmm. I I also coach as well. And we both are always working with coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I, I just find it so helpful to have that level of support you know, um, and, and even when, you know, someone like you and I were, we have learned so much, we have grown so much, right. And we have overcome so much and accomplished so much. And we've built our businesses, you know, we've we've done all, all these things. Right. And yet we're still like, okay, I could use some support. (laughs) (laughs) Always, always. I mean, that's why I'm on year three right now with my coach and, it, it just feels like, it feels like mm-hmm. loving support and it feels like mm-hmm. having someone that is there to cheer you up, you know, to cheer you on and also to hold space on the shitty days too, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to allow it all. Like, it's like not about pulling us out of it, but it's about witnessing us in yeah. it and loving us through it. Yeah. I was actually just going to ask you like, so why do you think that that is so important, which you just kind of answered, Mm -hmm. uh, for us. Um, and like how important has that been for you in Mm. terms of like your business and your well being? Like (laughs) I can't even put into words that, um, what my coach has done for me and the coaches in her program. Mm -hmm. I mean, every area of my life is drastically different, improved Mm -hmm. in so many ways. I mean, I Mm -hmm. got the courage to um, get divorced, to leave my marriage. I um, made six figures in less than a year, my first year as a coach. 
<laughs> so amazing. It's like, what is this? So I made the money, you know, I moved this? on. I know, like, what is this? What is this? This is great. But like, it was, it was, yeah. And it, there's been growth in every area of my life. And the way I see myself, the way I show up in the world, how I can speak and hold space for others, I've learned how to to really be there for others because my coach has been really there for me. So it feels like this now that I have been so loved, so supported, it is my turn to give back to the world and to offer them that same loving guidance that I have had these past couple of years. And I've had a coach since I started business. And when I started my photography business, seven years ago, I hired a coach right away and she taught me how to set up my um, packages. So right from the get go. And she said, you're a high end photographer. And I was like, I am <laughs> like right away. I, I came out the bat as a high end photographer. I made $2,000 on my first mini session shoot, 30 minutes of shooting my very first shoot. She bought a canvas and then bought some digitals. It was $2,000. I could barely ring it up because I was so nervous. I was an elementary school teacher. I was like, what is this? two thousand dollars for a 30 minute session of taking pictures of your child like it was ridiculously easy you know and at the time i thought making money was hard you know i had to be exhausted every day i was a, a public school teacher i was exhausted every day you know and and that was when I, the first time i saw oh this doesn't have to be hard you can charge higher prices right away <laughs> and have it be easy and fun wow <laughs> Okay, that freaking story is freaking gold. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. That amazing. It was amazing. I was so nervous. I could barely ring her up. I was like shaking. And I tried yeah. to play it cool. You know, I was in person. I did in person sales from day one. Day one, no digitals like I did canvases. Um, albums, prints, like everything was all about tangible, real art that you hang on the wall or you have heirlooms. And I charged what my coach told me to charge. I was like that. I would never pay that, but who, you know, and then I did, I disproved myself because I've gone on to book photographers and paid thousands of dollars for beautiful photography. And, um, and, and that experience showed me that this is really worthwhile. People love this. This is legacy. This is important to people. This is worth a lot of money. Yeah. And they value it. You know, yes. I think that is the thing for, um, you know, creatives and visual artists to, to understand is like, just because, just because like it comes super easy, like you said to us, mm -hmm. Um, does not mean that other people will not value it immensely. You know, right. when, whenever we don't value it, <laughs> then, you know, it's hard for us to ask for that value. But what, yeah. what an amazing investment that you made in yourself mm -hmm. in that coach, you know, who I think coaches and mentors who are further along the path than us, you know, they're able to take that, you know, 10,000 foot view, right? They're able mm -hmm. to pull up and out in a way because from the situation, because we personalize everything so much and we just don't, we got blind spots, you know, mm -hmm. at, at those levels. We don't know what we don't know, right? right. So um, that what, but you had to decide that, like you had mm -hmm. to decide, I'm going to go all in. Mm -hmm. I'm a 10 out of 10, going to invest in myself and this coach. And I'm going to be coachable. Like that's yes. the other thing too, right? It's like, you have to be coachable. As do well. what they you tell you to, to do. Like, it's yeah. so easy. I'm like, I don't understand. What, and, and it's not the, the hard part is that there's fears, you know, because people look at me and they're like, well, you just did it and it worked right away for you. And I'm like, you don't think I was afraid? You don't think I, and it's like, I did it anyway. And my strategy has always been just do it, like get into action and just do it. Like if someone who's already done what you want to do has done it and they're telling you how to do it, do it. You know, I don't, it's like, just do it. And that fear of rejection, that all of that, it's just, it's just practice, practicing it. Are you going to get rejected? Yeah, you are. Are people not going to pay you sometimes? Yeah. Are they going to tell you they don't like something? Yeah. Great. Like it's all part of it. And the more you, you, you get stronger with every experience, every experience, you're stronger, stronger, more powerful to the place that you, they just be like, well, you know, I love this. And there's going to be some days when, you know, my clients are not going to be happy and there's going to be some things that go wrong, but that's all part of this. And I love all of it. Yeah. Totally. You know? 100%. 
100%. Julie, thank you so much. Like this was so valuable. Aww. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing everything that you did. Um, I know that everybody who listens to this is just going to feel the amazing value that you shared you know, with you. us here today. So um, everybody, um, just a friendly reminder that she is um, giving you all a complimentary gift, which is a video training on how to take better care of yourself without sacrificing your income. <laughs> yes. And so we'll have a link for that in the show notes. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description. So make sure you check that out for Julie's link. Also, she has a complimentary um, call, breakthrough call, abundance breakthrough call that you can also schedule with her. So freaking generous of her to offer that. Thank you so much for offering that for our listeners. Um, and so we'll have the link for both of those things for all of you down below. So make sure you check it out. Um, and other than that, Julie, is there um, anywhere else that they can find you? Uh, so my website is juliegetsinger.com. I also have a podcast, Absolutely Abundant, a podcast for soul aligned creatives. And Kelly is on my podcast as well and shared an incredible interview. So definitely check that out. Um, I'm also on YouTube, Facebook, all the places, but you can find me mainly on juliegetsinger.com. All the links are there. Mm. Thank you so much, darling. Thank you. And I can't wait till we get to dance together. Again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you in the fall. Yeah. Yes. At our next get together. I'm super excited. Yes. So. Thank you so okay. much, Kelly. This was so much fun. It's my honor. Thank you so much too. Okay. Thank All you. right, everybody. Until next time. Happy creating creators. Mm -hmm. Bye. Mm -hmm.